Hello, in this PCSX2 tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set it up on Mac and not just Mac, their own ARM chip. So, you know, M1, M1X, you know, M2, all of that stuff. Okay, so to do it exactly really simple, all you need to do, and you know, it's come a long way since when, if, when the M1 laptops and now obviously there's M2 and M1 like X as well, but you know, it's come a long way since the, when they first came out, it's really simple. There was some other offshoots uh, that came out. Honestly, the core one is fine. So you go to the PCSX2 website. I'll provide a link in the description. Go to downloads. You can get it from the GitHub page or you can just go to here. If you scroll down, Tello Trinkle is a developer that actually worked on a mac port in the interim and he's actually you know part of the pcsx2 community he still does stuff and release i think it's been probably a few months now but you can get nightly build so if you go to the stable releases there's no mac build you know available for like m laptops so you go to the nightly build honestly they work fine go to the latest one which for me is 1.7.3557 click this there's Qt and WX widgets. So Qt is the newer interface. WX widgets is the older interface. I think they were eventually phased that out. I'm going to, this video is going to primarily or not only focus on the Qt version. I'll create a different video for the WX widgets version so you can see how to set it up on that. If you still want the old school layout just on your new laptop. And there we go. It's, you know, downloading. And that's it. So the next thing you need is the PS2 BIOS file. I just want to mention overall this video is not condoning piracy and uh, you know it is for educational purposes. I recommend that you have a PS2 physically for legal purposes. I recommend that you own the game that you're going to play. I'll be testing Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex after I set this tutorial up and I do own that game. And so yeah, those are just the legal stuff. I you know do recommend that and so yeah to get the B, the bios file you can even repeat yourself or easier if you join our discord group there's a link in the description you scroll all the way down to the emulation and games go to rom download links scroll to the bottom go to bios files again this is not condoning policy it is for educational purposes and you know you can google you know how to get the bios file you can you know do whatever you want this is just for educational purposes and scroll down playstation 2 click bios files and take you to a mega link and on here this save button will actually be green i mean you'll actually say download click download click save and you'll have the file i've already done it because it was a bit slow for me so i'll forward to do it beforehand and the bios file is right here so we just double click it it will extract it and here we go and here is our pcsx2 i can delete the old version that i extracted i have two because i had hmm, actually that's really interesting uh, literally when i just set the to you know pcsx up to pcsx two up before this video uh, you know i downloaded 1.7.3556 that was the latest version and now literally they've just released because i've just refreshed version 1.7.3557 so yeah update to the latest controller database N nothing major that's fine so i will use the latest one so double click again it's going to extract it now that we got this we can copy it over or just move it over to applications so it's permanently there so we can either go to applications or they go to i was search and find it but i'll find it here pcsx2 there we go if you get this error which you probably will you want to go to system preferences security and privacy go to open anyway click open and that's it that's all you need to do to you know get around that level problem and now what you need to do is copy over the bios files so go to system or settings sorry go to bios go to open in explorer you can browse to a particular folder if you want to feel free to do that i was going to put it where it, you know the settings are by default and now in here we're going to copy over our bios file so all of this literally command a command c now command v boom there we go click refresh list appeared great 
and that's pretty much it so let me just show you some settings you can force it to start in full screen you can choose different themes if you want to pause the game on start if you really want that and you know have it so it sets your discord profile to playing pcsx2 which is pretty cool you can add a game directory so you know we can add that and i've got a directory in that's fine click ok ps2 roms open and that's fine click yes mine will be quick and it's picked up the game crash bandicoot wrath of cortex and in emulation you can change the speed if you want it again i recommend leaving it as default system if you know what you're doing and if for a specific game you need to tweak this feel free free to tweak it advanced system settings same thing with the graphics i recommend the olivia's or automatic and then if let's say you know a game may work better on metal and you feel like it's not running as well set it to metal or vulcan be vulcan or metal that you'll be trying metal will probably work better overall vulcan no harm in trying it as well and you can change the aspect ratio you can change the internal resolution i'll leave it as native again i would recommend that you put it as native make sure that's working then up it from there and yeah there's a lot of, you know of settings that you can you know mess around with and in the audio again i'm going to leave that as default for the memory cards let's create a memory card and the memory card name i'll do, you know put this name mcd001.ps2 uh, we don't need ps2 okay And there we go. We can create the second one if you want. I'm not interested in doing that. And again, not interested in network. Feel free to have a look. You can enable achievements as well, which is pretty cool. I will create a separate video for that. And the last thing, we need to set up our controller. Go to system, go down to controllers, and for you know port one, you know, controller type is DualShock 2. And you can do automatic mapping like keyboard. Honestly, I don't think it's the best. So I'm just going to clear it and remap it myself. The controller is always best, but I'll just use, you know, a keyboard for now. So I'll press, you know, up, I mean, left, right, down, and analog. I would just do, I do W, A, D, S. L1, L2, I will do just a number two key. Do, 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 do. Again, I am just bitballing it right now. Enter the backspace for triangle. I'm going to put T for square. I'm going to put Y. So I'm going to put U, I. Again, I'm literally just trying to you know get it working so you can see. Feel free to create a new profile. You can have multiple profiles. The benefit of doing that if you could have a different profile for a different game or a different genre you might want to set your controls different if you're on a racing game compared to an fps game for example i'm going to click close and that's it that's the setting all done you know double click your game here we go and if i press escape it takes you to this menu where you can resume game you can toggle and save state so the benefit of states is you can save anywhere in the game it doesn't have to be at a point where you normally would be allowed to save which is these specific points in most games which means you could literally be in the middle of a level in the middle of a race in a racing game like gran turismo save it go off it come back a few days later and just continue from there which is fantastic and you just you know load that state to some you know game properties save the screenshot you can switch to software renderer most of the time you're not going to need to do this this is only if let's say the hardware render is not working very well and you know software works better and you can also chain the disc if let's say it's a multi-disc game click resume game and let that continue on the pcsx2 website go to compatibility and here you can see what games are compatible and in terms of being playable literally over 99 percent are marked as playable from this and perfect there's only there's if like a few that won't work fully but the vast majority of games you know are more than playable and you just go in here find your game so like crash bandicoot for example is mine wrath of cortex and it is 
bit of information about it. A universal it's green, it's playable, production. it's fantastic. Developed by Tra Traveller's Tales. You can go full screen as well while Libby as is. Crash Bandicoot! <laughs> So it's using the metal renderer, just you know, just a native resolution. Again, feel free to up it when you know your game is working fine on your system. And honestly, with the metal or Vulcan renderers, but especially metal, the games work really, really well. And let me know if there's any particular games, maybe like God of War, Shadow of Colossus, Gran Turismo 4, that you would like me to test. Let me skip this. There you go. Oh, I hadn't got the game selected. Yeah, let me know if there's any particular games you would like tested on PCSX2 on Mac using the M chips. So like I said, this is... I have the M1 Pro. Crash Ben. There you go. Running fantastic, seems very smooth. We'll have a quick go at the first level, but that is really it. What are you this. looking at, fuzzhead? If you do have any questions, Feel free to, you know, join the Discord group. There's a link in the description. Feel free to also comment on this video if you have any questions or any suggestions. And, yeah, there's a lot of resources and information on the Discord group. So, you know, I think you'll enjoy all of that stuff. But now you can enjoy me playing this for a few seconds. All this. Ah, I'm going to let's jump. I'm going to square. Let me try one more time and then I'll wrap up and upload the video. Square. Don't really need that. These are die hard Crash Bandicoot fans. Blast the me, you know, blast the spinning the apples, the bumper fruit, as I used to always tell people. Fell off. Okay, that's fine. I'm gonna leave you at that. Right. Let me show you save state. So if I save it, I'll go off it. And let's see if I was to launch it back up. Peace. I mean, I quit it myself, but okay. And if I was to reopen it, So by default, it's going through this whole process. We go to system, go to load state, load the slot. It literally just goes to where I had left off. So I'll just close the game, that's fine. Exit with, you can exit and save state, but I'm gonna exit without saving. And that's it. So that's how you set, oh, again, I closed it on my own accord. Um, you, that's how you set up PCSX2 emulator, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator on your Mac with M chips and yeah, actually, this video will work for non-M, you know, laptops as well, to be fair. So it's not just M-related laptops. If you have any questions, like I said, there's a Discord group. There's, you know, the comments below. Feel free to join the Discord group for, you know, a lot of help, a lot of good, great links. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.